Great. Welcome, Liv Strömqvist. Uh, do I? Well, yeah. Welcome to DC, <laughs> Liv. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, actually, I, um, you know, I've known of you so for so many years and read all your stuff and listened to your pods, but I would like you to introduce yourself because you're a, sort of a difficult person to corner, so please introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I usually just uh, introduce myself as a comic book author, so I think that's my main thing that I do. So uh, yeah, I'm a comic comic artist. Uh, I've been doing comics for um, I don't know. Uh, my first book was published 15 years ago in Sweden. Um, I come from like the fan scene, um, do-it-yourself movement. So I I was. I was just starting doing my own little fan scene, and I was very inspired, um, inspired with the, from the feminist movement, uh, from the feminist punk movement, from the riot girl movement, and uh, stuff like that, uh, uh, with all these uh, punk groups from the United States, like uh, Bikini Kill and <laughs> all of this. Uh, 90s uh, feminism and uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, Kathleen Hanna who was the front person of uh, Bikini Kill that she made her own fan scene and uh, I was really inspired so um, so I just started to, to, to make my own uh, comics and um, yeah so it, it just evolved from that. Yeah. And um, when I was making comics, I was uh, studying at the university at, at the same time. So I was, I've been studying uh, political science and um, philosophy and literature and a lot of things. So this kind of came into my comics as well. So the books I was reading and the theories I was um, reading was kind of entering the comics. Mm. So they have developed more and more to become some kind of um, mix between... Um, um, uh, almost lectures. Uh, yeah, sometimes. yeah. Amazing. So that was a very timid presentation. I would like to <laughs> present you in a slightly different way uh, because Liv is actually a feminist icon in Sweden. I'm Swedish myself and I live in D.C. And you have been a trailblazer for a lot of female cartoonists in Sweden and done some stuff that no one else had done before you. Uh, and you're also today quite a celeb in Sweden. I actually <laughs> heard myself introducing you to someone saying, she's our Roxanne Gay. I don't know if that's true, but, uh, but a little bit of, uh, you know, you, t you take a clear political stand and you use your creativity and your art in, in talking about important issues. So uh, um, you're, you're uh, um, actually, um, when I first got your, f the, the first uh, of your albums that was uh, uh, was published in 2007 was completely uh, I remember we all a lot of people m my generation and younger bought it to each other to just give away just as giveaways because they were so bloody good uh, and um, the, and so you're you're um, you're a star basically <laughs> that's fantastic that's too. what I should have said yeah you myself. should have said that just <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. a really big star you in had Sweden you had new yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but so now uh, you're, you're publishing this album here yes. in, in America and mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the background of this particular album and why this is the one that became the, <coughs> your, your, your debut in English. Uh, yeah, this album is uh, about the um, cultural uh, construction of the uh, female genital organ. So... Uh, I just, um, I just, I think that like every um, artist have to um, start their creativity, creativity from some kind of pain or some kind of uh, some place inside them that where something isn't really like resolved or, uh, and uh, I. Um, 
I think that I, I just started, this started from actually me being interested in the uh, feeling of shame because I was reading a book like this kind of self-help book about yeah. shame, about yeah. the feeling shame. And in, in that self-help book, they made a distinction between uh, shame and guilt. And they were like, in Swedish, the, these uh, words are very similar, like skuld and skam. And they said that... Um, Guilt is something that you feel when you have done something towards someone else or you think that you have done something. But shame is something that, that is not connected to anything that you have done. You just feel uh, this intense feeling and it, it is about uh, who you are. And um, for me, uh, the, the feeling of shame, I think, is very, very interesting. And uh, when you have experienced... Uh, shame when you are younger or, or in your life, you often remember it very, very strongly and you can recall it years later and then like, you just think about it and you're like, oh my God, no. That, I mean, it, like, like this kind of like really intense feeling of like, I, I want to disappear. I don't want to be here. I mean, and for me, uh, I have a few incidents of shame that are really linked to um, like uh, uh, the female body, mm -hmm. the, the genital organ, menstruation, and things like that. And I think that the, the key to this, to this feeling and these issues is that, that like, it's, you have this really intense feeling of like, I really want to disappear. This is so embarrassing. It's like something I, you have been exposed like in, a, in some way. And, and, um, and you feel like, but it, but it's it's not because something you have done. It's it's the shame is there because who you are, just yeah, because yeah. you have this female yeah, body. Yeah. That, just because you. Uh, so I I have one quite strong memory because I was really I thought it was really 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 embarrassing with menstruation and I had really really bad uh, menstrual cramps when I was a teenager and I was um, sitting in my classroom and I started to have this really 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 bad uh, menstrual pain, but I was so embarrassed so I couldn't. I, I was too embarrassed to tell the teacher that I wanted to uh, leave the classroom to have mm. a painkiller. Uh, so I fainted inside of the classroom. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, then I, when I think about this when I'm older, I'm like, well, how? Yeah. this is so absurd. Like, how, why can I just yeah. tell the yeah. teacher, like, I need a painkiller, can I leave the classroom? But I was so... Uh, like mortified with the shame I, over this, so I couldn't like I couldn't uh, say anything. Um, so um, and and uh, maybe you could uh, make some kind of psychological analysis of me and why I was embarrassed. But I'm not interested in psychology, um, in like individualist no. psychology like this. I'm always interested in the society, and mm. because I think that every. A person who is menstruating is like had some kind of um, experiences like this. So I was just, I was just thinking like I really want to um, get into this and uh, understand how this taboo mm. is constructed. What is like the cultural, the historical reasons for this? And uh, I think that it's a lot. A lot of it is, of course, because this uh, menstrual blood is connected with the. Uh, genital organ and around the female genital organ there is a lot of um, shame and um, but you also uh, so, so, so therefore the album developed to be about this yeah. uh, body part yeah. and so, so there is different chapters. One chapter is about the inner labia, <laughs> a very small uh, body part that is uh, completely forgotten and, and now there is a, a chapter about the, the cultural history of the inner labia so uh, I try to um, like get into all these little tiny parts and just like um, discuss them. But you also want yeah. to reclaim the word, word vulva. Yes. 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 And explain and why is that important to reclaim the actual word that's sort of similar? Well, I mean, the whole uh, female genital organ is like a really, um, it's, it's a very like mysterious uh, place that, you know, mm -hmm. it, it has been really, um, 
it, it hasn't been really discovered. Uh, it, it was very late. It was discovered very basic mm. things like mm. the size of the clitoris and things like that. So it has always been this really like mysterious place that no one really... And one big part of it is that there is no real good word. Mm. Because the word va vagina, you can use it, but actually vagina is not referring to the whole organ. Mm. So if you want to use the correct word for the outer parts of the organ, you have to say vulva. Mm. But this word is barely used. And uh, so this is all part, of course, of this problem that you can't really even uh, talk about this organ because you don't know how to use the words, which is really shameful. It's something that you don't really talk about. And um, uh, yeah, so, so, so that's a big, uh, uh, of course, a, a very big uh, Part, part of, of the, what you do. Yeah, yeah. But the, the book is starting quite, I mean, I, I'm amazed how much research you must have put down because some of this information I've never heard before. You start to go through different men mm -hmm. throughout history who's been obsessed by the Swedish, mm -hmm. uh, the, Swedish the, the female uh, uh, genitals. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a bit about a few of them and how you researched it and found out some of this information? It was really funny because I think also when you, when you talk about the vagina, the vulva, there is um, certain ways of always talking about it. Also, people who want to reclaim the, the genital organ, they also always talk in the same way and they say the same things. They mm. say like, why isn't there a word for it? Or uh, even more funny, I think, is like, you should be really proud of your, uh, uh, of your uh, vagina because it's really, you know, like no one talks that way about another body part like the, the liver. Like no one is like, <laughs> uh, oh, why don't you take a moment to just like feel gratitude over your, what kind of work your liver does? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> this organ you know isn't it beautiful isn't it you know but you it's always have this kind of talk yeah. about the vulva yeah. why yeah. it's just yeah. an organ it's just looks kind of weird it's it's not like something because it, i think this is also part of the problem that we're like overly mm. uh, it's, it's because it's been yeah. oppressed yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you're and like then you have to take it back and what not and I'm like, like you, you really yeah. want to come because uh, it's, it's yet to have her like whatever it's the, you know yeah. but but it's 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 this um, yeah. so and and I think that when I was reading about it I was mm. like you always say also when you talk about the the vagina and the vulva it's like oh it's so hidden we have to talk about it it's really important but when I was reading about it, I was like no no, I think the problem has been the opposite. Like, people have been too obsessed with it. Like, mm -hmm. men have been completely obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. Like, in the Bible, for example, you have, like, uh, pages and pages and pages about mm -hmm. menstruation. I mean, why use so much uh, uh, time and energy to talk mm -hmm. about this? It's so bizarre. Really? Uh, yes, in I mean, the uh, in the Bible have this oh. long, long, like, how, um, how disgusting menstruation is and, like, you can't uh, touch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, if a menstruation woman has been sitting on a pillow you cannot use the pillow and if she has been you know and if the pillow then she puts a pillow on the bed you cannot use the bed and then if the bed you know it's, it's, it's uh, this uh, long 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 uh, yeah, part yeah. of uh, how yeah. you how disgusting this is and how it's like uh, some it's almost like it's uh, uh, some contamination yeah, yeah. but so so there has been a lot of obsession about these things and uh, definitely um when you look at history, I mean, we, for example, if you read about the witch hunts, uh, they also had obsession of the genital organs of the yeah. witches because yeah. they, they examined their genitals and they looked for tiny dots that should uh, um, uh, tell that they were, were witches, like yeah. small warts and things like that. And, and it's so uh, funny, it? like, it also like how the, these men were like looking uh, into these women's yeah. uh, genital organs and like, is this a wart? Is this a strange? Strange one, you know, and, and they didn't know anything about them, so they were like saying, "Oh, this is a witch, and this is not a witch." Uh, so it, it's been it's it's been an obsession in in various uh, epochs, mm -hmm. and also uh, I mean in the um, and Freud was really, yes, Freud I mean, was completely, completely obsessed. obsessed. Uh, yes, completely Ooh. obsessed. And we have also uh, later uh, examples yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that people who have been 
uh, too obsessed uh, with, of this. Yeah, with this I mean, organ. it's a whole. It's fantastic. It's like a hidden history you're, yes. you're bringing out here. <laughs> yes. Really, I never. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it I've never heard of, about before. Yeah. And you also historically, you go back and find amazing proofs of this. You know, or the worship of the the vulva or the uh, the female genitals throughout yes. history. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So it's both too much, uh, too much attention and too, too little, little, or yeah. too odd it's attention. A mixture, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not relaxed. <laughs> yes. Let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. It's very uh, objectified. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's the, you lack the voice of women themselves to yes. describe it and Completely. talk about it. Yeah. It's always like the uh, uh, doctors or religion or um, uh, mm. this kind of oppressive structures mm. who mm. try to. Uh, and, and I mean, we see it today with uh, circumcision, for mm. example, like why mm. have this complete obsession? Mm. You have to um, rearrange uh, some organ that yeah. is perfectly uh, yeah. functioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, but, but this also uh, happened in, mm. uh, in the Western world with the clitoridectomy, yeah, for example. I never heard. In no. America. In yes, America. Yes, up to yes. the 70s. Yes, yes, yes. No, not the 70s. But in the, it, it, was, it, it was peak. Speaking mm. in the, uh, what fun it often not all at? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, 19th century. The 19th yeah. century, yeah, 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 it was peaking. Yeah. Uh, and but something uh, happened in the 70s. A girl, a five-year-old. Yeah, there was a five-year-old, but she was not. This was not in the 70s. I think no. in the, in the yeah. 40s. I, I don't 40, know. But yeah, they, yeah, late, there, too late. There, there was um, doctors who who were perf Performing. because uh, yeah. yeah, you because I think most people heard of hysteridectomy mm. where you remove the uterus, mm. but I had never heard about clitoridectomy. That was that you remove the clitoris for medical purposes, and it was for things like back pain or even cases where women wanted divorce oh, and yeah, they yeah. Uh, performed this. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it happened in the yeah. United States and uh, in, in different countries. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really a, a horrible, brutal, brutal history, history, a terrible history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and it's so absurd, uh, it's uh, bizarre. Uh, 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 bizarre so, and yeah. untold. But yes. it's so, I mean, the way you mix politics and, and, and humor is just amazing. I mean, I was lost out loud reading some of these you know there's a man taking away his wife to clitoris to me and she's yeah. just told I think we've grown apart no 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 and then pulling <laughs> yeah, her in yeah. you know yeah. it's just it's fantastic how you managed to do that but um but when you do your research I must go back to your background as an academic that you studied so much you must spend time in archives to find all this information I mean significant time um, or how do you do yeah, about yeah I don't, I, don't, I don't know because people always um, ask me this when I'm uh, uh, like oh you have to but I, I don't think that I spend more time doing research than any other person who is like writing an article about something okay. or yeah. uh, oh, you know you not. just no. I, I, I just read books uh, about this and yeah. I try uh, to uh, uh, yeah and then, to find the information uh, yeah I find information <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and sometimes uh, sometimes I do more like for example I was going through biology books that mm. are used in um, schools and I was like going through every biology book that is used mm. there's some some more extensive research but other, otherwise I just like I, 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 I try to find uh, books that are about this and that you know and then I but maybe it's because I'm a comic artist so yeah, it's yeah. not uh, mm. so common when you make comics to y use have research, uh, research, no, use research in this way, but if you yeah. write just other any one, other yeah, book, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but like, it's that yeah. combination that yeah, is unique. Yeah, the combination is yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, not yeah. so common. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at some of your work, because I think your style deserves being presented here for you, for our audience. Is this, how do I do this? Yeah. Yes. So let's see where we are here. Could you, could you comment, you know your work, Better than I do. Is there yeah, something? Yeah, this is the first comic in this book. It's a man who have been too interested in the part of the body known as the female genitalia. And yeah. uh, here uh, we have these different <laughs> men. And uh, uh, we have a Saint uh, Augustine, for example, who was uh, um, a very early Christian thinker. And uh, 
Georges Cuvier, who was this um, French uh, race biologist. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, here are the different so men. This is your I, style. Yeah, this I mean, is my yeah. style. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know if it's possible to read this. No, no, uh, let's see. no yeah, but, but this is more to show the, your style, I yeah, guess, because yeah. it's difficult to read. But yes. what you do, I mean, what you know that some of your work... Uh, that I happen to have with me here in Sweden, is used at universities and high schools and stuff as an introduction to political theory and and political philosophy and so on. Did you know that? You know that, or...? Yes, I have heard that. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's amazing. So, so it's a, a very clear sort of... Uh, I mean, this is sort of... Yeah, this is uh, uh, very uh, bizarre also that uh, Kellogg, uh, Dr. Kellogg, yeah, who is the inventor of uh, cornflakes, Kellogg's cornflakes, <laughs> he was a doctor and he wa was also writing books where he was counter uh, uh, masturbation. And he uh, had, uh, he made a book about uh, how to prevent female masturbation. Uh, by um, pouring uh, acid on the clitoris. So this, uh, this is very, very weird information of uh, Kellogg, the inventor of Kellogg's cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> Did <laughs> you know? had this, like, very <laughs> yeah. odd, uh, like, yeah. side career yeah, of yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, prevent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah, what yeah. he has been remembered no, for. for <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's been... He, he, A little side from in, in, yeah. in his own time, he was... Uh, he was known for two things: the cornflakes and this um, anti-masturbation. Uh, yes, and the anti-masturbation. But now we only remember him for the cornflakes. Yeah. Let's see what we have more. Here. Yeah, yeah. This is from. Uh, what uh, is this? Exactly. Um, what is this? This is mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. Oh yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. This is uh, some. I was just looking. Uh, online uh, from like internet uh, discussion forums where women were writing about their own feelings about their genitalia and uh, wanting to make different kind of surgery and so on so it was just uh, it, it, it's uh, from this theme of shame because um, I mean, in the Bible, when Eve uh, eats the apple, then God's uh, punishment to her or to both of them is that they should feel shame over their Probably. genitals and they have to put on clothes. Mm. So this uh, chapter is called uh, Feeling Eve or Feeling Like Eve or something. I don't know what it's called in English, but... Uh, it's about uh, the feeling of shame yeah, of yeah, your own yeah, body. Yeah. So I just took uh, to, quotes to, 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 from, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a chapter, I, I'm not sure that comes up, but that when you elaborate around the uh, paddy, you know, the um, uh, pads and yeah. about the freshness and yeah. pads and having a tampon in your hand so you can hide it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really interesting. You never, I mean, it takes a few steps before you understand uh, where you're heading at because we're, it's so ingrained in all of us with a sense of shame. And there is one uh, cartoon where you show a girl sitting in a sofa and she's bleeding. She's uh, she's uh, uh, bleeding on the sofa mm -hmm. and the guy is sitting next to it and she's, d you know, dying of shame. Mm -hmm. Or she's spilling wine. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a clear picture what you mean why yeah when she wi spills wine she's not as embarrassed no like she's of course no, no no she's a little bit embarrassed but not yeah, <laughs> not, no, not extremely no, embarrassed no, no no yeah but but just to to, to bring it home mm. to the reader you know mm -hmm. that why is it so horribly embarrassing mm. with having a, a mm -hmm. leak from your mm. uh, uh, your menstruation or spilling some wine you mm -hmm. know what's the difference yeah um, um, so but do you I mean you're you're very good at um, also connecting things to economy and politics and so so what conclusion do you draw from the uh, invisibility of the vulva and the f female genitals what is the political undertext and economic even yeah I don't know uh, <laughs> um, I don't know um, I think that like for example this uh, thing with the uh, menstrual pads and the, that there is a lot of uh, that they used to have 
when they made commercials for tampons and pads, they used to always have this kind of language and the, when they said, they used two words mo most of all. The one word was safe and the other word, word was fresh. So it's always like you, ha you can feel safe and fresh with our products. So uh, the, the, the undertext is that if you don't use the, those products, you are unsafe and you are... Uh, uh, and fresh like so so the, the uh, y y you feel scared and unsafe and why do you feel so scared and unsafe if you have a leak i mean it's because the society looks at you this way so you have you you have to plant like this fear mm -hmm. also so of course it's connected with i mean yeah but it's difficult because it's um I think that every political movement, and when you ask, like, what is the conclusion? Because uh, every political movement, and I think feminism in particular, and and uh, it's it's always like really, really fast absorbed yeah. by um, the system. So, and it's it's really so it's it's difficult because now I just. Uh, like when feminists start to talk about uh, like oppressive um, ads, for example, it takes like one second, and then they made like a feminist ad for <laughs> for yeah, 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 tampons, yeah, yeah. and then they just like uh, you know mind fucked us yeah. completely, and then we have to like uh, go. Yeah, so yeah. so we are always bought. I think yeah, like yeah, the resistance yeah, yeah, yeah. is it's immediately a bought. Uh, 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 so it's and also like I mean there is no um, I mean. You, to have this like female empowerment movement yeah, and yeah. you know it's it's completely uh, you can have this at the same time mm -hmm. as the neoliberal world order mm -hmm. there is mm -hmm. no um, clash in that so I think that we really have to always like reinvent ourselves and <laughs> yeah, yeah. completely yeah, try to uh, think always like uh, big country, be uh, critical yeah. thinking all the time yeah yeah but I mean what you what you're saying is mm -hmm. I mean you have two other frames there one with the 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 priest saying you know i've decided women are less worthy mm -hmm. than than men mm -hmm. and then when the church is not uh, deciding what's mm. the truth science does and then science mm. comes and there's mm. a doctor saying well yeah. I've decided through biology mm. that women are, yes. are of least yeah. value and that says a lot just yeah. that shift and and, yeah. and uh, so I mean what I, to answer my own question in mm -hmm. other ways like well this shows this inferiority of women that there are different methods of making women smaller mm -hmm. isn't it you yes know? yes yeah, yeah 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 just to it's really to interesting that shift because like when there was a lot of uh, when religion had a very strong um, uh, uh, power right. role in society that you could only say that like women are inferior to men and mm -hmm. women's bodies mm -hmm. are blah 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 and like women th there was I mean there are still this tradition, for example, like a woman who gave birth cannot enter a church uh, for six weeks or something, but she's unclean and so on. And like this making like the female body something that is uh, not, uh, it, it's it's not, it cannot be part of the holy. It cannot be part, it, it's, uh, it's the opposite of the holy. So the female body is connected to like the, the devil and the underworld and the dirty and the shameful and the, and, and that I think is, uh, because that's, um, I think that it's it's really, I mean, for for every, I think that for every religion, like fertility religion, before that, it's completely obvious that like the female body is um, connected to the holy, of yeah, course, yeah, because yeah, it yeah, gives yeah, life yeah, and so on. Life, yeah. Destroying. So so it's too yeah. obvious. Yeah, you have to yeah, like yeah. take away yeah, this, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, god, yeah, make it weak, yeah, yeah, yeah make yeah, it weak, yeah, yeah. and uh, make it the opposite uh, of uh, the sacred. Uh, so uh, so it's this really so strong. Can, like you have to say that this is disgusting, and like take it out of the this, you know, and but then when religion was losing its grip. It was re becoming really important, like the biological differences between mm. men and women in a scientific mm. way. Right, yeah. So now we have so much uh, research uh, just right. about the oh. genital organ, uh, because this is the one place where you can really see difference between men and women's bodies. So they started to make all this research in the 19th century about how uh, the, the uterus um, was, um, you know, like uh, 
påverka effecting uh, effecting the, the intellect and the, there uh. was a, a book uh, written by a doctor uh, that said that um, women it, it was arguing against that women should study in the university mm. because they weren't allowed mm. uh, this was before they were allowed to study and and he was writing like this book that said that because of menstruation women cannot um, and shouldn't enter the university mm. because mm. Uh, if they uh, if they do the blood that are used for their menstruation will be used in, in the by brain. their brain yeah. and uh, so so <laughs> if they enter the university they will not uh, menstruate yeah. anymore yeah. and that and would be like the end of the of human the race you so see. it's it's the it's the it's <laughs> like it's it's a <laughs> really big do? threat it's terrible so yeah, and yeah, and this yeah. was a doctor yeah, writing yeah, this book for yeah. example so so it's been it's been and, and we can still uh, hear uh, people say that i mean there was uh, say like for example like women cannot be uh, president because of the menstrual cycle and the, you know they're not um, uh, reliable uh, because of menstruation and so on. So, uh, so you can really see how uh, biology has been used, used. for political mm, yeah, purposes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. of course we still see it today. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. happening all the time. Mm, like. Mm, mm different theories mm. of how women are and how mm. men are and using this mm. uh, for right. yeah. for your own political agenda and it can be mm. anything mm. so mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean uh, there is an example in, in in japan i think i don't know if someone is from japan here that women get to be off work five days when they menstruate every month mm -hmm. which you should say oh that's nice but then they don't get hired yeah. because they're all there they, they won't be at work yeah. so you, you have yeah. that cycle of yeah. you know what can mm -hmm. look as a considerate policy is actually mm -hmm. used against women which is really interesting but the, the whole this whole book is just full of examples of small you know oppressive ways to keep women in their place and not letting them uh, flourish um so uh, back to your sort of more the career before this because this is this is an amazing piece of work but you have this is the latest thing you've done um, you've done uh, political stuff before and this is definitely political as well but where are you going next what's what's happening after this um, actually I made one book in that came out in Sweden after this and that book is. Um um, more about it's about like climate change and uh, things like that. Uh, it's more political satire, more uh -huh. like um, yeah. So what's uh, the title of that? Uh, Uppgång och fall. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It I haven't lived in Sweden for a while, so I must have missed French. that. Yes. <laughs> Grandeur et décadence. It's uh -huh. in French. I don't know what it's in English. Rise and fall. Rise and fall. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. But um, you're, you're moving thematically throughout. Yes. You know. Uh, yeah. But you're in I have a few interests. Yes. You <laughs> only like in. three or four <laughs> interests, and they loop around yes, all the yes, time. Yes. So I just like make books about the same things, but it's a little bit different and a yeah. little bit deeper and little, yeah. yeah, or in a little right. bit different way. Yeah. 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 Um, and yes. How come you have this passion for these issues, feminism? I mean, you come from a small little town in uh, in Simrishamn, mm -hmm. outside in the rural Sweden. And how did you find this way? Well, what's your background? Did you go to library or how did you find the sort of feminist discourse and how did that connect to you yeah i was i i have like a fixed date and time like when i really? became a feminist it's really, really yes like i think it could, <laughs> but it, yeah it was because i was um visiting my sister she was in stockholm i was 17 years old and in in that time uh, in that place there was no debate about feminism at all i'm 40 years old now and that's like it, it wasn't modern at all at that time i mean it wasn't it was it was a bad word something you say to a woman you know i was it was only to say that someone was a feminist was only connected to like being uh, ugly and boring and you know like not being able to ever laugh or joke or you know having fun or you know everything was like just a bad yeah, you know yeah. so uh, but then I went to visit my sister and we by accident we went into like some uh, like a lecture by a sociologist who was she's her name is Karin Holmberg mm -hmm. and she she had made a book where she researched inequalities in young couple 
young couples yeah. uh, that didn't have children mm. because there's a lot of research mm. about how there is inequality in families and so mm. on but these were like really young couples that didn't have any kids but still she could detect mm. <laughs> by making really deep interviews with these couples like how um the guy in the relationships could like his he he was the norm like what he did was the mm. was the normal thing and that she yeah. was the uh, unnormal like yeah. her reactions were always phrased as something that was extreme or bizarre or too much or but he was like the it, it's really 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 in, mm. interesting research mm. Mm. and i think i remember that she uh, started her lecture by saying like you can view the world in different ways and there's a lot of it but now today here we will look at it with a uh, feminist glasses mm. and then she was we, we look and this was like completely like putting something i was like what is that like? And and then I went home to my little yeah. school. I was looking at everything in my school with my mm-hmm. feminist glasses, yeah. and I was so shocked. I remember just walking through the corridor and like, this is. I mean, I can't believe everything that is happening here. Mm-hmm. With, uh, mm-hmm. you know that. Uh, so 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 I was really like the. Oh, and then I went to the library and 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 tried to read all the feminist literature. Mm-hmm. There was only two or three books, so mm-hmm. I read them. Then I was like the only feminist in school. I was really really determined, yeah. uh, fighting all the time with everyone, with the teachers. And, but we had really. I mean, it was we had a teacher, for example, in mm-hmm. political science that said that there are biological differences in the Mm. brains uh, between men and women and you know this is Mm. why Mm. women cannot reach high positions in society Mm. and they because they are uh, you know Mm. Mm. biologically determined to nurture Mm. children Mm. and they cannot become geniuses Mm. or artists Mm. or you know and like (laughs) all of these things Mm. like Mm. It was really, it's, it's, it, yeah. you know, no, it's, 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 yeah. in this country it, yes. today. Well, so, yeah. so, I mean, you, and, and I, I remember the first year of going to this school and listening to this, I just felt this weird feeling that I couldn't really put my finger on. Like, when I come out of this lecture, I feel bad. I don't know why. I just feel this, like, weird feeling. Uh, but then, after reading all this theory, mm. I could just argue back. I'm like, mm, yeah. and, and I felt so incredibly empowered I felt like uh, I was just like you know having mm-hmm. arguments no, okay. saying when, like this is you know one theory you you can look at it this way what mm-hmm. what is your proof and all and and, and uh, this gave me so much energy and uh, joy so mm-hmm. i felt like for for years i was just like really i just felt so i had i had oh, so much the, the to do <laughs> yeah. i know you got yes. so much to do yes yes yeah. so yeah. Uh, so so it was it, it was really uh, a lifesaver yeah. to become yeah. a feminist yeah. yes yeah but you moved to university did you you studied in lund or in, in where uh, did you yeah, I've studied yeah. Uh, in different places, but in Lund I studied oh. for for uh, some years. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because then you—that's when you started to do the, the the cartoon, or was that after your university years? Yeah, it was so when I was uh, yeah, at the university. Yeah, I was actually yeah. making them yeah. at the same time. Yes, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. they're highly influenced by all the thinking, yes. the political th- thoughts yes. and stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, so one thing that I was interested in asking you, I mean, you're kicking quite high, low, left, right, center. Um, but one of your, your even people, I mean, you're left leaning, definitely. Uh, but in some of your albums, you're also kicking quite hard to the left, you mm-hmm. know, and even taking the piss of feminists. And I mean, yes. in some place. So how do you dare? How do you dare? I mean, where aren't you worried to, you know, make to, you know, attack your fan base or something or? Or is it just um, yes, but I'm also uh, I really like I just what what I'm interested in. I think it's um, yeah. You have to you have to do that. You have to do that because if you don't do that, then you I think you are you can just yeah. You know, if, yeah. if if you only create things to please your audience and th- makes you know I, I made this really horrible uh, comic about the left in yeah. my latest book it was like 20 pages it's like fuck off you know all yeah, you yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, you are yeah, idiots yeah. like how can you be so retarded you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was really 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 yeah. harsh yeah, it was really yeah, yeah. and but it was so because I mean 
it's 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 um you ha because if you don't do that i i think that also um uh, people will not be interested in no, your in thinking. Your no, 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 because like I would not be. In, uh, you're you are interested yeah. you're just in a pamphlet, some. Then. Yes, otherwise you're yes, a pamphlet. Yeah. Uh, yes, and yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, for me. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really boring. Yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. to read people who are just. Mm. A, a, a group people who mm. like I want to advocate for my little group mm. constantly mm. 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 even mm. if my group mm. is acting mm. like idiots mm. I will still always be on my little group yeah. side yeah, why yeah. how, I mean, how it's, uninteresting yeah how you know. uninteresting uh, 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 and, and it's bad for the little group yeah, because the yeah. group also needs to hear yeah, like yeah, some, some, some yes we yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to like be able to uh, say that something we some things that we do yeah. are wrong yeah, and yeah. Uh, so so uh, or if we don't like agree it's 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 no big problem then no, you know no, I, I disagree no. with this but someone has to say mm -hmm. it and i think mm -hmm. you don't, you can't have this like no, it's really very refreshing when you read it it's amazing you, 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 know, you, you just, so so i i, yeah, I think yeah. that that it's really important and uh, it's not um uh I, it's also like it, it says on this book it, that i'm an activist but i think that 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 i think that this um uh more more than that i'm always i i always want to be uh, if i if i had like i come up to this this is the conclusion mm -hmm. then i have to go like all the way back around maybe this mm -hmm. isn't correct yeah, like yeah, maybe yeah, I will try. Yeah, yeah. for example so now yeah. i've been reading so much literature mm. the latest year about the differences in mm. brains between men and women because I only want to know it, you know, like <laughs> because I said from the beginning, this yeah, is yeah, the, yeah. the most horrible th thought I know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I really want to know what are you How saying? Yeah, what are you saying? So, yeah. so I'm always interested in hearing something that I haven't heard before or knowing mm. something that mm. I didn't know. Mm. So this mm. is... Uh, uh, this is what I'm interested in to just uh, continue researching, continue researching and yes yeah, and, yeah. and uh, otherwise I, I would be really really bored yeah, yeah. Yes. so do you think you would ever do uh, cartoons with no political message would you do something that's just fun <coughs> this is entertainment um um, no, I don't think so. Uh, it's really difficult to do something that is only fun with uh, no political uh, intention at all. Like, what would that be? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Maybe a little dog your, that was yeah. falling or yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult to make it funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, something yeah. completely... But it's really funny. Or it was, See if there's something else coming up here. But they're really incredibly funny. I mean, do you laugh when you do your own cartoons? Do you sit there and laugh? I, I hate to admit it, but I do. And, you do? Uh, yes, and uh, it's terrible. But uh, I can understand that. Yeah. I can almost feel it. When I, I have a friend who is an author, and yeah. she she writes really um, uh, sad books about really heavy subjects. And she says, like, when I write and I when I cry mm -hmm. when I write, mm -hmm. I know it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I feel that uh, when I do my comics and I laugh. I know yeah. that it's funny, yeah. but it's it's uh, but it's uh, I mean it's not a good uh, personal trait to laugh no, at your own jokes you and uh, people who sit in yeah. my yeah. Uh, because I share my um, room where I work with other people and yeah. they sometimes hear this and it feels like it doesn't feel She's good. She's sitting there no. laughing yeah. at <laughs> but, you know, yeah. But you have a lot of small. Uh, I mean. Uh, this is probably the last picture, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But you have a lot of small comments. I mean, I love that in your cartoons. You've done that all through your career. But you do s sort of s little people coming and commenting. It's really... Uh, uh, you get pulled into your world quite easily. Uh, so... Uh, I just want to recommend that to be pulled into Liv's world <laughs> because it's an amazing world. Um, but, but do you, I mean, you sit in a group of other cartoon, female cartoonists and yeah. you, you're also, you started, you've started waves of uh, uh, cartoonists who are female. I think you're Nina Hemmingson and what, I mean, I don't know all the names, but there's quite yeah. a few of them today. Yeah. And you sit with some of them yes. as a, in a, in a yeah. sort of commune kind of yeah. office, Yeah. <gasps> But also this thing about menstruation, mm. uh, you started a bit, you did a summer program, right? That was yeah. predating this album, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, where you did a, a long, uh, a one hour long 
talk about mm -hmm. menstruation and mm -hmm. the history of menstruation and then later this came out of it but then after that a lot of other cartoonists have also done on mm -hmm. menstruation and mm -hmm. bloggers even my daughter follow one blogger who talks a lot mm -hmm. about menstruation yeah so uh, now we are done you're done <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. It's always like like that. That, the, the, but I can t tell about this picture something quite funny is that I have I have an exhibition now in the metro in the subway of Stockholm. Oh, okay. and uh, because they have like um, in very very big uh, pictures of different artists, and they put it up for one year, and then they change uh, to oh, another sorry. artist, so it's kind of Summer, like yeah, some yeah, some yeah, kind yeah. of uh, exhibition that is always changing, and this year they put up my uh, my uh, drawings, and they have they have put up these drawings, uh, these pictures of these uh, menstruating women in the subway in Stockholm. Really? really, really big, like, yeah, yeah this, even bigger than this. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, they're, they're uh, because this picture was actually, it was inspired by a real photograph that I saw that was a real ice skater who yeah. had a menstrual stain when she was um, uh, doing some uh, oh, performance. Yeah, because yeah. this happens a lot yeah, with yeah. female athletes and, yeah, and so on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I just, uh, and I thought that, uh, that <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it, yeah. it, I, I was just looking at this uh, photograph of her yeah, uh, yeah. and I was like really, I thought the, the, as a picture it was yeah. really interesting mm. because it's, uh, this sport is really, uh, they they work really hard with it, it says a lot about like what what is a woman in our society mm -hmm. and what what is mm -hmm. what is what is it to be female because it's it's uh, this sport really underlines uh, femininity because mm -hmm. these these women are always very they have a lot of makeup and they have mm -hmm. always like princess yeah. always princess like yeah, princess, clothes yeah. at the same time they are extremely really strong, strong and mm -hmm. powerful and do very difficult things but they mm -hmm. are always like dressed up mm -hmm. almost like a Dolls. parody yeah, yeah, some yeah, kind parody. of really yeah. like bizarre <gasps> uh, 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 femininity uh, 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 where uh, uh, they are uh, uh, uh. but when she had a menstrual stain on this mm -hmm. picture then you you would think that mm -hmm. like this should be like the the icing on the cake of her femininity mm. to have this because she's yeah. really female we don't want so anyone to like misunderstand that <laughs> yeah. she is a woman you know yeah. like we yeah. painted all this and we made all this and now she's got but menstrual blood does not at all signify she's yeah. a female she's like but it it it, it, it says something else it yeah. says uh, she is a failure as a woman uh, maybe she is insane you feel sorry for her you want to cover her up you mm. you know you, you mm. get all these feelings right, right, like right. so when, when you saw, saw this ice skater you you mm. see like someone who has failed someone who is in in in, in need of protection mm. 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 uh so I, I just thought it was very interesting to do. I, so I tried to make a picture of a, an ice skater with like a more neutral uh, face and someone who's just like yeah. something that doesn't, you know, so so what or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And, and I made another one yeah. that had the, the text, um, it's all right, I'm only bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a Bob Dylan yeah. quote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so I had this, it's all right, I'm only bleeding. And I had this and... and uh, but uh, they caused uh, a lot of reactions when they were in the subway. Really? Yes. Uh, so there was uh, this uh, protest uh, uh, against really? them. Yes. Yes. In Stockholm. And wow. uh, people were saying uh, what? What do they? How do they phrase that? First, there was the. They don't want to see it in the subway, and it's like it's disgusting. And they they also destroyed them twice. They uh, throw threw paint on them. So they had to replace them. Okay. And there has also been a political debate where the uh, right-wing populist mm. party in Sweden, called the Sweden Democrats, yeah. they made like a... Uh, uh, an article, like a debate article, yeah. about uh, that they were against uh, menstrual art in the subway, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and if they uh, came to power, yeah. they would uh, prevent this uh, from happening ever yeah, again. Uh, yeah. And uh, and they said they but made a meme. Yes, it, on their so official page. Interesting Facebook. that this particular party goes for this yes. particular art. Isn't yes. that interesting? It, it's interesting. And yeah. they they made uh, a meme that said. Um, the art in the subway now, and then they, they had this picture, and yeah. with our politics, and then they had a picture of like old ships, old, like pre modern <laughs> oil painting. Yeah. That's uh, what they want. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but it, it, it's, it's really, uh, it's really strong, and yeah. it's a strong, yeah. uh, 
Uh, it's a strong message. I was telling the story when, when I was in Germany, in, in Munich, yeah. and then the audience was... No one was laughing. They were just like... <gasps> because they have all this uh, history of, uh, you know... Mm political uh, movements mm, uh, trying mm. to uh, pre uh, prohibit art and mm, they yeah. felt like this was really something mm, that mm, that mm, they felt mm. really bad about so mm, it's it's mm. very uh, it's, it's so you have you have met different reactions on yes. this album than all your other albums so yes, all your other yes. albums as well not just the pictures but also the albums have yeah. you had different reactions how interesting mm -hmm. yeah But I think this, uh, it's interesting with pictures, yeah. because we live in a yeah. society with more and more communication mm -hmm. is through mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, for example, this picture is uh, a picture that has uh, been, like, f it's been around in this different, like, alt-right mm. memes mm. also like as a as an example of how tax money is used the wrong way also because they how can public art be for this kind of crap and so on so it's been like it's so it's it's interesting yeah oh. but also people have been very positive about it and i yeah. I, i also had have had a very positive response yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, people yeah. been yeah. telling uh, different yeah. uh, positive um uh, feeling But I, I, I must admit, I think that it is quite brave of these uh, art people in the mm. metro, their little art council mm. who decide mm. who mm. can uh, mm. display their things, because it's it's a kind of a bold um, choice, yeah, I think, yeah. to have yeah. these pictures. Yeah. So because it is a taboo and mm. it is kind of uh, offensive, mm. I think people will have to stand there every day, mm. and it's a public. Tra public place but so it's kind of a bold statement for mm. them to say why yeah. should this be more uh, you know mm. it, it's mm. uh, so, so be, I mean, and when I was yeah. sending them in I felt like now they're going to tell me that you cannot display yeah. these pictures yeah. but they they just said okay we are putting them up so yeah. I was very positively yeah. surprised and I've also seen uh, people um, saying like this is um, You know, like tourists who yeah. said, like, wow, uh, it's like something very interesting and typical for Sweden mm, to, like, mm. have this very yeah, liberal yeah, yeah, public yeah, yeah. art. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they said that, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, so people have had that reaction, too. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. typical for this country, so <gasps> country. I don't know. That, that's what I was thinking when, uh, I don't know if your publisher is here, your American publisher, it'd be incredibly interesting to see how this is received in America uh, yeah. today, today, actually. Uh, um, Is there anyone there who would have a guess of how it will be received or, you know, some kind of reflection around this particular theme? No? Yes? I mean, I'm not an expert, but I, I teach in schools. Yeah. And when I went to school, we had something called abstinence-only education, where they aren't even allowed to tell us how to safely have sex. They're, they're only allowed to tell us not to do it. Yeah. So this sort of thing, I think, in the general sort of American sphere, would be pretty far out there. Yeah, pretty far, yeah. <gasps> Unfortunately. I, I remember when your summer program, so it was, Liv had, you, have a pro, you had a summer program and I was listening to it and it came out and you started to talk, I wanted to, you know, you, you started quite sort of, this is the embar most embarrassing moment in my life because I'm having my period. And uh, remember, you just started that then, utroligt pinsamma stunden. Uh -huh. Your homans. You, you, I think you started it like no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember you, you. You had a summer program. Was yeah. that your summer program? Yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, no, I told a story. I think that when I was just starting to make comics. Yeah. I, I made like my yeah, own little some, fancy. Some guy said yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then I went to a party and I met and I, because I didn't know any comic artists, yeah, so I would just yeah. like had my own little fancy and blah blah blah. Then I went to a party. I met. Uh, uh, a guy who was a comic artist he had published some books and he was like much more and then I was just standing talking to him in the kitchen I was said like okay I make comics too yeah. and then he said I hate oh I really hate um, female comic artists because they only make comics about menstruation he said <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah so that was the start of the be really because I point. never made uh, any comic about menstruation yeah. up until like yeah. this is my sixth book and yeah. then I remembered this and I was mm. like yeah it's really but I think 
yeah so so now i made this uh this only one comic it's, it's yeah. uh, 40 pages it's about yeah. all the whole cultural history whole demonstration cultural history uh, yeah demonstration. but yeah, uh, yeah, it yeah. was yeah so this is how i started no this, because yeah. some point, what i was yeah. going to say as a comment to you was that when i listened to Liv's mm. program and it started out and i understand she's going to talk one hour about mm. menstruation you know which was quite i remember thinking wow this is yeah. quite far out no one had done that before yeah. you know yeah. so i remember and that wasn't that many how many when what year was that 2013 13, yeah. so i mean yeah it, it's pretty far out in sweden as well that's what my comment was but but it'll be interesting to see here how it mm -hmm. lands here is that program available on sveriges radio in English? Yes, yeah. in, not in English, but in Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> but it's available. Yeah, yes. I don't know if it's you possible it's to. It's a but very, very good program, actually. But more uh, or less the, yeah, uh, the, the same. The, it's, it's, a lot of it is in that chapter, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, you've um, also done... Someone who wants to ask. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Yes, okay. oh, questions, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, Qu I was just going to say, I was thinking about your question, and last year there was a company that makes um, underwear that uh, you're supposed to be able to wear without a tampon, like it's fine, it'll, if you bleed it won't, you know, run everywhere. Uh, I think they're called Thinks, and they tried to put up a subway campaign in the New York City subway system, and there's no blood or anything that looks like blood, but they had a lot of images of cut fruit. Mm -hmm. and then their product to sort of evoke the idea of like a, a vulva and in the subway system there's a lot of ads for like breast enhancement or like um you know like even some like there's occasionally like uh products for like penises and stuff like that there's some weird ads that get put up there but this one the subway transit system said like no no way it's not going up and people got really like found out about it and got really pissed off and there was like a big public reaction with why is this not okay and, and there was enough pressure that now those ads have been up there and they're fine but there's no like no. the only you know thing i could think of that yeah that would slightly resemble yeah yeah it's interesting with imagery because um to have uh, because i don't think this is not even very realistic uh it's very graphic it's just like this really red and really white and really because m menstrual blood is like it, it could could look much more gross with like some more naturalistic brownish you know like but but this uh, but this i don't think is very um offensive but it th this picture has been uh just because uh, displaying menstrual blood like that, you don't do that in an image. Uh, uh, and uh, like you said, like every tampon ad, they mm. usually use uh, blue, blue fluid, blue color, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and they or they don't uh, they don't show it. So 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 it's uh, it's a very as as a picture, you never see it in the public sphere um, mm -hmm. like that. <gasps> and um, yeah, I don't know. Um, any more questions? We have only a few minutes left. Yeah, back there. Um, I'm really excited about your book. Um, and uh, part of it is what you shared at the beginning about putting on these feminist glasses. And I think reading things like this helps us put on these glasses to look at things in a different way and understand why we have certain societal norms, where they come from, and how they could possibly be different uh, or better. Mm. Um, and it makes me think, a friend of mine goes and works with the Maasai in Kenya every once in a while, and the women there are still um, forced to do circumcision. Um, and when she goes and talks to the, the girls and does some you know, elementary school kind of education and asks them, would you ever consider not doing female circumcision? They say, no, 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 I have to do it, but I'll give my daughters the choice of whether or not mm -hmm. to do it. Um, and sort of this idea of like, I can't go against my societal norms, but, but I can imagine a future in which those norms are different and I want that future. Um, and I think in some sense, I, I, you know, I fall to that as well. Like I, I can envision a future where women don't have to shave to look beautiful, but yet I'm still not willing to not shave, like I'm going to try to get rid of body hair for some reason because my mind says that that's appropriate. Um, do you have any thoughts about like putting on those glasses and then becoming the future that you, that you want to see? Um. 
I think it's difficult as uh, like it's a very strong uh, story this that they cannot say no to it because the societal norm is so strong that even if they you know understand that that it's the uh, it's a really big sacrifice. It says a lot about how the the group uh, collective works. That it it should be so uh, weird for them to be like the only person in the group who who were not circumcised. So they do it even if you understand all the bad sides of it. Yeah, it's really interesting. I don't know. I think it's really it's difficult like to to be one person and stand against norms that everyone else does. But I think that I don't know by by talking about it, by reading about it. I think I think it's interesting just to know knowledge is just uh, mm -hmm. uh, the 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 root of uh, it's, it's the Greater. base of yeah. almost everything. It's I th yeah, just like just for for example the the menstrual taboo. It's not uh, it's not. Uh, maybe it's not like uh, it, it, I think that it would be so much more interesting for example in school if you would just were educated about the taboo instead of being educated about like the actual fact like for like if you have a, a, a class that you would say we are going to talk about the menstrual taboo. Like, do you have an experience of it? Why has, like, how did it develop? Where did it come from? Like, uh, for uh, for whom has it served? Uh, mm. For whom has it been uh, something bad? Mm. Like, who gains from it? it it's, it's something that you can just look at this um, and then uh, what about it? Do, do Is there something about it that is positive that we want to keep? And is, is there some, something that is negative that we are, want to mm. not do anymore mm. and so I think that like yeah, having this um, uh, yeah just to know like w where where does all this come from mm. and mm. Uh, mm. Th that's the the beginning of changing but it's difficult as one person to change something yeah mm. Mm. yes there. Uh. I just read a little bit of the book. I'm really excited to, to see it, to read it more. But uh, as a, what you can say as men, what you can tell, tell to our men, in that case to me or to us, that the guys are here, to help us to, 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 to go more with you. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that people ask me sometimes, like, what do you have any advice or do you have anything you want to say? But I just... Um, uh, I just um, make my books and I don't really think about so much like the reader or what the reader should conclude from it so I think that uh, you, you have to read it and uh, come up with your own conclusions <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh, can I answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. I've had to answer a similar question on a different panel um, I would say once you've learned what you can from your own research, spread it to other men. Because men who hold certain ideas about women or other genders aren't necessarily going to listen to women or other genders, but they might listen to another man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I think listening to what women say is important, but mm -hmm. seeking out work that women have made instead of asking maybe a woman you know to answer questions you have for her uh, about women in general. Like, go and seek out uh, books and things that women have made about all these things because we've been talking about it for a long time. And then, yeah, definitely share that information with other men because, like, there is a lot of that, and I think a lot of what you're talking about feeds into what men think they're supposed to be, like, what masculinity is supposed to be, and ignoring what women experience is part of that, but like women and um, and gender queer people and all of us can't fix that. Like you guys have to fix that. Uh, more questions? Just maybe one very small question, and I really enjoyed the discussion today. Um, if we be seen online the whole sort of genre if men had periods. I wondered whether you'd ever sort of been attracted to do some graphic art around that. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, um, 
I have one uh, one picture here that that is about uh, I don't know if we can yeah this very classic um, like like if if we would live in a matriarchy that that would be like a woman having uh, menstrual cramps and just like sitting and <laughs> because <laughs> or because. Um, I mean that melancholia is something that is really like has a very high status, but the the uh, PMS is this that P we call PMS, pre premenstrual uh, depression, uh, or uh, uh, it's, it's it's something that is uh, viewed upon as something very ridiculous and something you can like, but 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 like that, that's something was, that yeah, if yeah. if it would be the other way around, maybe we would have this statue of a woman having uh, premenstrual. Uh, Anxiety, yeah, or yeah, and, yeah. and 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 being some in a very like uh, interesting state of mind, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. But you, ha you have some other uh, uh, in this book about orgasms. Yeah. Uh, you know, if women's and men's orgasms were uh, regarded in the same way, you have some beautiful uh, uh, text there. Yeah, so I have like a guy, um, guys who eat dinner and talk about the uh, their orgasms. Yeah the way women talk about it so yeah that way you can uh you can see that it's viewed very differently yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. because it's unfortunately all the time we have for